In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to read the parts of the staff, know the parts of the staff, uh, as well as recognizing higher and lower pitch. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and open up your Music Theory Unit 2 uh, notes in the Google Doc that's in the Google Classroom, and we'll get started. All right, so here are the class notes. You all should be able to see these here pretty good. So the staff, part of our vocabulary, the staff. The staff are five lines and four spaces. As you can see here on the uh, in the notes, five lines and four spaces onto which all music notes are written. And you'll notice here uh, that we utilize all the parts of the staff. We use all those parts. We use the lines and the spaces. Now this is what's going to be critical here. As you see where my cursor is here, the lines and the spaces on the staff are numbered from the bottom to the top. Line one line two, line three, line four, and line five. Okay, so as you see here on my cursor here, there's line one, line two, three, four, and five. They're counted from the bottom up to the top. Same with the spaces. One, two, space three, space four. From bottom to top. Make sure that you remember that. From bottom to the top. Now we use this space here. This is, the, this is our uh, area that we write all of our music notes. Notes, they, these are oval shaped symbols. Oval shaped symbols looks like this or it can look like this, either uh, uh, empty or filled. White or black notes is what we call them. That represent sounds called pitches that we'll learn about in just a second, which are placed on the lines and in the spaces on the staff. So as you see over here in this diagram here, <coughs> From the bottom to the top, there's a note in, on line one, there's a note on line two, note on line three, four, and five, so on and so forth, all the way up to the top from one to five. Same with the spaces. There's a note there in space one, space two, space three, space four. Okay. Now it's important, it is critical that when you draw these lines, and you'll be doing this in one of your exercises, that you draw and put your note head exactly on the line, in the center of the line. See where that line goes straight through the middle of that note? Okay, that's critical because if you have a note where, and the same thing goes for the spaces, make sure that that note is perfectly between the two lines that it needs to go between, on a, depending on whichever line you need to put it into. The reason being is because whenever we're reading a piece of music, sometimes you'll have a note in a line, on a line, as well as in a space right beside of each other. And if you can't tell which note goes where, it's going to be very difficult to determine which note you actually need to sing at that particular point in time in the piece of music. So that is critical to make sure we have our notes centered on the lines and centered in between in the spaces. That's critical. Now we're going to jump ahead just a little bit and read about pitch. These notes are representing a specific sound a pitch, how high, and all a pitch is, is how high or how low a note or tone sounds to the human ear. Now, we have what's called a high pitch, and we have low pitches. So here's an example of a low pitch. Let me turn that up just a little bit. Here's a low pitch, and here would be an example of a high pitch. Same thing that we hear when, like if you're, if you're out in nature, you hear birds tweeting, they're tweeting at a high pitch. Or if you hear a bear growling out in the woods, they'll growl and roar at a low pitch. Same thing with, uh, like with a, um, a, uh, a dog. Sometimes they'll bark. The bigger the dog, the lower the pitch is of their bark. Uh, so that's what we mean by a pitch. It's, how, it's a tone that's, that we determine how high or how low that tone sounds to the human ear. And we write these pitches, again, as represented by these note heads, by these notes, on the staff. And the higher the note is on the staff, the higher the pitch it represents. So if a pitch appears higher on the staff, again, from bottom to top, then that note represents a higher pitch. If it appears lower on the staff, they represent a lower pitch. So if you look at this diagram here, where we have higher, lower, higher, lower, okay? I'm gonna play each one of these notes. So here is the first pitch, the very first pitch. 
That's that first pitch right above where it says higher. Now I'm going to sing the, or play the second pitch, which you'll notice is written higher on the staff. So that means it is a higher pitch. All right, so now here's the third note. You'll see that it is written lower, so it means it's a lower pitch. That's that third pitch. Here's the fourth one, even lower. So it's gonna go lower on the staff and it sounds lower. So now we're gonna to go to the high pitch here. Now we're gonna to go to the next pitch. It's lower and here's the final pitch. So as you see, the higher or lower the placement on the staff, the higher or lower the pitch. If it's higher written on the staff, it's higher pitch. If it's a lower pitch, then it's written lower on the staff. Now, we know we have uh, a lot more notes. We have at least 12 tones to play with when we're in, when we're dealing with music and when we're dealing with singing. But we only have nine areas on which to write them on a staff. We have the five lines and the four spaces. So how do we write a note that's higher on the staff than what's, than higher, that's, yeah, that's pitched higher than what the staff can hold or lower than what the staff can hold? This is where we use what's called a ledger line. A ledger line is nothing more than an extension of the staff. It's a short line that are added to extend the range of the staff, either high notes or low notes, whether they be too low to go on the staff or too high to fit on the staff. And if you'll uh, uh, look on here, I'm going to draw this out for you here. So here we have a staff, okay? And I am going to draw ledger lines for you, okay? So if we have a note that say we want to put it right above the staff, all we have to do is take our pencil and we mark on the staff, there's a note that's right above the staff, it's just beyond it. We don't need a ledger line yet. We're going to need a ledger line if we want to go any higher than this. So we can take our ruler here that I have, handy dandy little ruler, okay? And then I'm simply going to draw a short straight line. There's my ledger line, there's my first ledger line and I put my note, again, centered on that line. Now, if we want to go higher than that, we simply draw a leather ledger line exactly in the place where the first one is, just like that, and then we draw the note, excuse me, let me fix that. We draw the note just like that, sitting on top of that line. Now, if we want to go higher, we can add another ledger line, but instead of deleting or erasing this ledger line, what we're going to do is simply draw that ledger line again, and then we go up a little higher and draw a second ledger line. That's bad looking. Let me fix that. We draw a second ledger line, the same width, the same the line needs to be the exact same length as the previous line before it, and then we simply draw. That, let, that note on the next, let, if I can draw it correctly, and yes, I'm going to be just as much of a stickler on you if, when it comes to putting your notes on the line or in the spaces. Just like that. That note goes up above it. So you can see we continue and extend the staff. And then we just, if we want to go up one more, we draw two more ledger lines, and then we draw the note above that second ledger line. The same thing goes for underneath the staff. Let's draw our note here. Let's draw our first ledger line. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the next ones because we're going to need them anyways. But just so you can see them and so that they're clean. There's that note. And we can draw this note here. And then if we want to go one more line down, we simply draw our next ledger line. And again, they need to be these these ledger lines need to be the same length, same length each time. And that's just to make sure everything is clear on the sheet music that you're looking at. Keeps it less messy that way. Keep them the same length, okay? So those are ledger lines going above the staff and below the staff. Okay? Extensions of the staff, that's all they are. Okay, so next part, uh, let's watch a quick video.
that is explaining in a little bit more detail about notes, the staff, and the ledger line. So let's watch this video. These here. note heads are laid onto. Back it up, start from the beginning, and here we go. The first step in studying how music works and studying music theory is learning how to read and write music, or in other words, learning how to translate sounds into graphics. There are many ways to do just that, to notate music, just like there are many alphabets in the world, but we'll focus on the Western classical way of musical notation, which has increasingly become standard throughout the world at this point. The visual representation of a piece of music or song is called a score, and it looks just like this. All of these symbols are telling the performer which sounds to produce and how to produce them. And once a pianist gets a hold of this score and plays it, it sounds like this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, see my cursor on the screen? For these high notes up here, I'm gonna, these high pitches, the piano is going to be playing them above all the other instruments in this recording. So as the piano plays these high notes, I'm gonna to point to them so you can see their relation between uh, their placement on the staff and the pitch, the high or low pitch in which they sound. So follow along as I point to them. This, by the way, is called the Nocturne in E flat major, opus 9, number 2. You can see that over here by Frederick Chopin. It's one of his most um, famous compositions. So if you've heard it before, um, it's not a big surprise, really. It's been featured in films and TV and a lot of other media. You will soon be able to make sense of this whole score, but first we have to break it down and start from the very beginning. A pitch is an audible musical sound. It can be very low, it can be very, very high, or anything in between, really. So when you pluck a guitar string or press a piano key, you hear a pitch, like this, a low pitch. Or a very high p pitch. Pitches are represented in music by notes, just like in languages, sounds are represented in print with letters. Notes are written as black or white oval shapes on a staff, just like this. There is a distinction between black and white note heads, uh, but it's not one that is important at this point, so don't worry too much about it. Just know that they can be either filled or unfilled, black or white. You can see that the staff that these note heads are laid on to consist of five parallel lines, which then create four spaces between the lines. The note heads are placed on the lines or in the spaces uh, between them, and each position refers to a different pitch. The rule of thumb is the higher you go on a staff, the higher is the pitch indicated. And the lower you go in a staff, the lower is the pitch indicated. Listen to these sequences of pitches and pay attention to how sound relates to what you see. Here's the first one. By the way, I'm playing everything at just a regular, ordinary, run-of-the-mill upright piano. So did you notice that when you were listening to those pitches, that the greater the distance between two notes, the greater the difference in pitch height. Notes placed on adjacent positions, like these ones, uh, or really any other ones that are featured in a space and then the other one on a line above or below it or vice versa. These notes form what we call steps, right? So steps are two adjacent notes. If the melody moves from a note to a non-adjacent note, no matter which note it is, that's called a leap or a skip. 
So basically, everything that is not a step is a leap. Steps and leaps are the two ways in which different notes may succeed each other and form a melody. They can also be qualified as ascending or descending, like in these examples. It's pretty self-evident. Ascending steps and leaps, the first note is lower than the second one. In descending steps and leaps, the first note, the first note is higher than the second one. So you may have noticed that between the five lines and the four spaces of the staff, you only have nine possibilities for different notes. But common sense indicates to you and to me and to everyone really who has heard music before in their lives that music must consist of more than just nine possible notes. So enter ledger lines. Ledger lines represent notes that are either too high or too low to be shown in the score or on the staff in this case. Ledger lines are a little bit abstract to understand, but the principle is this. You extend the staff by drawing extra lines to it, six, seven, eight, nine, however many you need. And these lines are short enough so that they are only applicable to the particular note head that uh, you're trying to apply it to, right? So just to that one note that is too high or too low for the score. So the staff still has five parallel lines, but for that note that is too high, or that note that is too low, you apply the necessary number of ledger lines above or below the staff so that you expand the, the possibilities of the numbers of notes that a staff can hold. So the, the principle is you have the five lines and the four spaces. When you reach the top line and you want a note that is higher than that, you place that note first on the first space above the staff and then it goes to the next line an imaginary line an imaginary sixth line just like that and then it goes to the space above that imaginary sixth line and then it goes to the imaginary seventh line right but you're drawing both sixth and seventh lines to indicate that those are the ledger lines the same principle applies if you're going too low for the staff so you can go first to the first space below the staff, then to the first line below the staff, and then to the second line, or I mean the second space, right? Right below the first line below the staff, etc. So it's really important to notice too that there are no lines above the note heads when you go above the staff, and there are no ledger lines below the note heads when you go below the staff. Okay, so that gives a little bit more detailed information about <clears throat> pitches, notes, the staff, and uh, the ledger lines as well. So let's go into, <clears throat> excuse me, for your assignment. Let me go through and explain that assignment to you real quick, okay? So if your assignment for this lesson, for this unit two, is you're going to complete a set of exercises of lines and spaces, and then after that you're going to complete an ear training exam, excuse me, an ear training worksheet and let me explain how to do that here. So if you'll click it, this is also posted in your Google Classroom as an assignment. It's labeled as such, but you can ask, access it through these notes here as well. So we're gonna access it through here. Now, making sure that you read all of the instructions carefully. Read all the instructions very, very carefully so that you can complete this assignment uh, correctly. All right, so let me present this screen so we can read these instructions. Actually, no, let me do this. This is even better. Okay. Okay, so uh, make sure you read all the instructions very carefully. Read all these instructions very carefully. You must make a copy of this presentation on your Google Drive before you can complete it. And you do this by going up to the top here, clicking File, click, and then highlighting, make a copy, and then clicking entire presentation. Once you do that, you'll be able to go in here and change the name of the document, which you will name it your name. So I'm going to put my name in here. Okay. Underscore by hitting shift and the dash button near the zero. And then typing in my block. I'm going to type in block three just for an example. Then another underscore, 
if you're typing on your keyboard and then saving the name as that and then you can click here and tell it where you want to save it in your Google Drive if you just want to save it right to your main drive page you can go back and click my drive make sure it's highlighted blue and then hit select but if you have a specific folder you want to save it into say you've made a chorus folder in your drive you can go through find that folder and save it as such in that place okay so we're not going to save this one so once you have your copy it should automatically open a new window which will have it to where you can edit it and it will be named this new name file new file name up here at the top where it says uh, music theory unit 2 exercises but it'll have your name at the end at the beginning of it okay only then again once you've done that you can save it uh, you can edit it and manipulate it all right let's go through how to do this okay so for number one you're gonna draw a staff you're gonna use these five lines right here each one of these can be manipulated so if you put your cursor over it it should turn into a four-way arrow you'll click and drag that line up to the first between the two dots and connect the lines to the dots connect the dots with these lines I'm gonna be grading on your accuracy so make sure these lines are as uh, centered on these dots as possible now sometimes you're not going to be able to get as accurate a movement with just the cursor by itself so what you can do here is you can if you're using a keyboard you can press the shift key press and hold it click the uh, click the item you want press and hold the shift key and then you can use your arrow keys up and down to make smaller movements and you can make minute adjustments to make it more in line with these dots okay same thing with these X's I'm actually going to zoom in here now if you're on a touch device like a tablet or your phone or something I would zoom in as much as you can you can go up here to this magnifying glass where it says zoom tap it and be able to magnify it even larger that will help you get things centered a lot easier especially on these exercises here so here is exercise number two using the X's provided so you use these X's here up here at the top you'll use these place the center of the X on the staff in the following location so these locations here at the bottom this one's been done for you so line three again these the staff is numbered from bottom to top so there's line one line two line three right there where that X is okay so to do this again try zooming in that makes things a lot easier especially if you're on a touch device Okay, then this one needs to go into space two. So what we'll do is we'll take our cursor, we'll click the X, we'll drag it down, see where that four-way arrow is, put it dead center of that X, and that will be kind of like your, your indicator, your crosshairs, so to speak. You'll click and drag the X down. Now you'll notice that this does not move the X just yet. You'll see that it moves a wireframe down, but with your with, with your uh, four-way arrow in the center, you can see exactly where the center of that cross needs to be. So we need to put this in space number two. So we'll put that cursor dead center of space two, release the, the mouse, and boom, there it is, right dead center of space two. Now, if by some chance you couldn't get it exactly centered, so say like you placed it like this, okay? This will be marked incorrect. So what you'll need to do is you can click that X, again, using your shift key, if you're using a Chromebook or keyboard, shift key and your up and down arrows can move small movements to be able to get that centered directly into the space. Or if it's on a line, you can move it about on the line. Uh, I got it right there directly on the line. Or, and if you need to, you can again use the shift key and make small movements. And that will enable you to move those okay and be fairly precise with your placement of the X's okay so let's go to oops let's go to the next slide I'm going to zoom out of this real quick so we can get to the next slide okay so number three you're doing the exact same thing that you did in uh, hang on a second let me fix this real quick just put these back down here all right so next slide number three using the O's we're using note heads here as you can see indicated here all these note heads up here do the same thing we just did on the exercise before you're gonna move this note head down on a line or a space So we're going to zoom in again 
Again, the more zoomed in you are, the more accurate you can be. So for this first example, it says to put this, the, num the note in space four. So we count up from the bottom again, space one, two, space one, two, three, there's space number four. We would put our circle here. We put our note head right there. So let's try for the next one. This says to put it on line one. So we're gonna take our circle, put our, cur our cursor dead center of that circle, click it once, put our, if, and if this cursor goes away and it goes back to your normal arrow for your pointer, just kind of move your mouse around and then come back to center on it. Then we're gonna click and drag it down to the bottom, put it on line one, dead center, there's my cursor, dead center on line one, and release. And here you see the circle is dead center of line one. Now, if you're not able to get it exactly centered, let's say for example, you got it about right there, okay? But again, this is again, you can use your shift key and your up and down arrows, press and hold shift and move your use your arrow buttons to move it center of the line exactly like that. Same thing with the spaces. With the spaces, you need to get the note exactly centered between the two lines. Okay? So here, get it centered exactly where the bottom of that circle is touching the touching one line and the top of that circle is touching the other line, just like that. So that's how you would do the lines and the spaces. All right, so next one, we're gonna zoom out here. Go to number four. Number four, these are utilizing text boxes and I want you to indicate using the letters H or L, I want you to tell me whether the second note is higher or lower than the first note. So for this example, you see here, here's the second note right where my arrow is pointing to. We see that second note is higher than the first note. So we would put an H here, okay? So now these are text boxes. So what you'll do is you'll double click inside that box and then when your cursor appears and starts flashing, you can type an H or you can type an L depending upon what the answer is, if the second note is higher or lower than the first. So in this case, our second note here is lower than our first note. So we would put an L there, okay? So that's how you do the unit two exercises. Now these are different from the um, ear training, which I'm gonna go through here in just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out to my notes. All right, now we're gonna show you to do the ear training. So this is where you can hear notes and be able to answer these questions. Again, here's the instructions on exactly how to save the, the document. Make sure that you save it as ear training, ear training, ear training. That's crucial. And make sure you also submit, make sure you're aware of that from when you submit your assignment, okay? Make sure that you actually are saving the ear training uh, slides to the ear training assignment. And same thing for the exercises ass uh, assignment. Do the same thing. I have I had a student that got them switched accidentally. It's an easy fix if it happens, but just make sure that you're aware of it while you're doing these assignments uh, before you actually post them. Okay. All right. So here we go. Here's the ear training. All right. So what's going to be involved here? After you get through saving your copy and everything, when you're ready to to uh, complete the assignment, you'll click this green button here where it says "click to listen." Right there. So you'll click that, and another link will pop up. So you see this, you'll click this link, another tab will open, and then once this tab opens, this menu system here will open up. You can open up your track, play it. Welcome to the ear training CDs for Alfred's Essentials And it will explain the instructions. This recording and while this is the playing, you can go back to their slides tab numbers, here for the ear training. One and two, lessons one through 50. And These complete numbers it correspond to the while track the numbers track on the is CD. Playing. The so, examples are played so by a variety of instruments: like piano, flute. Okay. So in this uh, exercise here, number one in the ear training, you're going to indicate. Listen to the music notes. You hear low music notes or high music notes. So high pitches and low pitches. And using the circles down here at the bottom, you will move one circle for each uh, example. Circle if you hear low sounds or high sounds. So if you hear a low sound or a low pitch, you'll take your cursor, click the circle, move it to the low. And if you hear high pitches, you'll have your circle, 
over the high. As long as that circle is around the correct word that you want to, to answer with, that's totally fine. doesn't have to be as precise as on the other assignment. So that's how you do high and low pitches. Okay, next one. Uh, this one here, you'll do the same thing. You'll listen to an audio track. Another tab will open up once you click the link. And you can play that, keep it open, and play that while you're manipulating uh, the slides over here. Again, these are text boxes. You're going to hear two notes, and you're going to indicate using an H or an L, uh, high, H being for higher, low being for L being for lower. Indicate whether the second note that you hear is higher or lower than the first. So if you hear two pitches, you'll hear these two, two notes. You'll double click inside the text box. Once your cursor appears, you can type in your answer, H or L. So that's how you complete this one. All right, and for the final slide in the ear training, here we're going to deal with ascending, going up, or descending, going down, pitches. You'll hear three notes, and you'll indicate, again, by using these circles down here at the bottom, moving the circle to an arrow that you think if the, the notes are ascending, if the notes are going up, or you would use this arrow to indicate the notes are descending, going down. Again, you'll click, click to listen, open that link, and then you'll be able to complete this exercise. Okay? So those are, that's how you do the two assignments for uh, unit two, ear training. And in this video, again, like I said, you have learned how to uh, recognize the staff and the parts of the staff uh, and notes as well as high and low pitches. So uh, once you've completed these assignments, make sure you turn them into the Google Classroom. And if you have not already done so, make sure that you submit your attendance. And if you have any questions about your attendance, please email me and I will be happy to explain it. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next lesson.